Ra 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 Check one two. Hi everybody, nice to be back. Good to see you. Nice to be seen. Uh, my name is Dean, and um, let's say we have a humdinger for you today. We're going to meet a friend. Uh, that's what we like to do here: introduce you to new people. We like to have experts on, but we also like to have people who like to mock the process, like Lachlan and I do. Also, welcome Lachlan Cross to the program as well. Again, nice to see you. Mm, pretty nice to see you today. Like decent to see you today. Not overly nice to see you today. We didn't really coordinate on the on the uh, the wardrobe side of things. We're both yeah, wearing, we're wearing the exact gray. same shirt. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Not only yeah. do we not coordinate on the wardrobe, um, uh, I want to talk about hockey a little bit today to start the, the podcast because Austin Matthews. Can I give you a quick six. tip? On, no, you can't because I'm still shirt? talking. No, because shirt. I'm, no, I don't want you to interrupt me. We're going to practice Ice cube. that today. We're going to practice Ice cube that today. in the light in the. Don't know what you're talking about. Wrinkles, no. I don't care. So um, I want to talk about hockey. So I talked about Austin Matthews having a heater last night at 65th. They win in overtime against the Pittsburgh Penguins. We don't talk about hockey a lot, although big puck fan. Leafs are heading into the playoffs and a bit of a heater. Um, And it dawned on me last night. I'm like, fucking Austin Matthews might be the best two-way player in the history of the NHL, the most impactful defensive forward He's he's Patrice Bergeron esque. That's how good he is defensively and offensively. He's the best player in the well, best goal scorer in the league. One of top two. Him, McDavid, the best player in the league. McDavid, if you look at his defensive prowess, not great. I'm like, he's the best fucking player, all around player, in his seventh year that I've ever seen in the NHL. I love Gretzky. I'm a Gretzky file. I really am. I got a ton of Gretzky shit. I'm a big Gretzky dude. He's the best offensive player to ever play the game, without question. No, Austin Matthews. He, I, I don't. I don't. Unless you take your bias into it, and dumb people do that. Austin Matthews. I've never seen a player like him, as attentive as impactful at both ends of the ice. I have never seen anything like this. Connor McDavid is outstanding. Don't get me Connor wrong. Connor does have his slips slip ups defensively. Yeah, but like. It dawned on me last night. I think you're going to have that conversation at some point in the next couple of years. Where is this the best overall, the most well-rounded? You know what's player funny that game? you're you're just deciding this now that it's going to be a conversation. <laughs> that's that's great because I haven't <laughs> ever heard anybody waxing. Here's my problem. I I'm yeah. I'm willing to have a conversation about Matthew's prowess if like, you're willing to bring player? up. McDavid at the same time. 100%. This is the problem I have with Toronto sports media. We're the Toronto assholes. sports media will literally have a 15, 20 minute panel yeah. talking about the best player in hockey. And they'll even do like an all time thing. And mm-hmm. they will neglect to bring up Connor McDavid, which to me, all they're doing is just trolling Edmonton fans. That's, that's all that is. Without so question. it's annoying. So what ends up happening is, we push back. The fact that you brought up Matthews as a great two-way player. Yeah. Although I have seen him. I've never seen him cheat defensively dis- once. Never. Come never. On. No, I've I'm serious, watched dude. literally a quarter of the Leaf hockey that I do Oilers hockey. Yeah. He doesn't give up on any defensive. He is being lauded today. Last night's game, watching him play the game he played defensively, which was maybe better than the game he played How many points did he get he last the best night? One goal. Tie goal, fucking 65 of them this year in 70, what, 76 games? I mean, Jesus. What God, I really Christ. wanted was I wanted Hyman the to catch him. There, yeah. was a, there was a conversation about a month ago about Hyman because he was on a bit of a heater. He had like nine points in six games or something like that. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I, I tweeted, I hope Hyman gets his 50th when they go to Toronto and then, and then catches him. <laughs> And what's Matthews. what is the Art Ross is the overall? What's the oh the rocket? And I'm like, and he's going to take the rocket away from Austin Matthews. <laughs> and everyone was like, freaking <laughs> you know what though? It was funny because I like I was tweeting that shit today. And Parker, David Parker, he's like, because he's an Alberta guy. He's like, yeah. no way, McDavid is the best player. And I'm like, yeah, you get out of your bias. Everybody's got to get out of your bias. But there's no bias point, in you know, there's a bias McDavid in, is McDavid is the best is offensive just, player to ever play the game. He, yeah, he really is. He, yeah, like he right is unbelievable. Now, the best yeah. active and player in the, the game thing is, isn't him, he though. He is it's his speed. Him. His speed is insane. Did you see him take down McKinnon the other night, Friday yeah, night against Colorado? down end to end, back to back. Yeah, it was incredible. 
Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. I, again, like you guys have Matthews, be proud of that. You guys can, you know, be very excited, and then you guys will lose in Game Seven of the first round and get knocked out. No question. <laughs> I do like this year, though. I do love this Hang year. On. Hang on, our guest Pete Creek is fucking furious right <laughs> now. <He's> in- <laughs> it's a low blow, man. Low blow. <laughs> oh, Pete! Uh, last year, I put a hundred dollars down on the Leafs losing in Game Seven of the first round, and you know the payout was only like twelve hundred bucks. I'm like, how is that not like way more? Like they've been doing this every year, year yeah. since like 1991, and you're telling me that the sixth <laughs> time they'll be doing it in a row. You're not going to give me more than twelve hundred bucks for a hundred dollar bet, and of course they they won in Game Six. Who did they beat last year in in Tampa. the first Tampa Bay? First round, yeah. Tampa got absolutely fisted by the I believe the Florida Panthers in the second round. Pete, you're yeah. a big fan, right? You're a big Leaf guy. You have to be because you're from the Hammer. So you're yes. sitting there listening in the background. Do you take any issues with what I'm saying? Can you remove your bias as a Leaf fan and go? Matthews might be the best all around player in the history of the game at this point. <laughs> I mean, I I do think he's he's up there, uh, but but I will agree to a certain degree. His playoff performance has yet to be uh, reached that potential. He plays great in the seasons, but I, you know because he's played, from Arizona, the golf course and then he starts played calling. Great in the first round last year, and then did sweet fucking nothing in the second round. Right, so I I want to see that. Throughout the playoffs, rather than just in the season, this so. is a good year. Uh, put I it, putting don't. all of this shit aside, what I like about this year is that there's like there's a conversation for more than a one a Canadian team to have right? a chance. Like, yeah, Winnipeg's yeah. got a chance. Vancouver's yeah. on a fucking barrel this year. They're unbelievable. Yeah. I don't know. Well, they've been slipping talking. here the last. They've been Sorry, slipping a bit the last month or. Two. Yeah, you got Edmonton. I, you, you're going to have four impact NHL teams from Canada in the Toronto. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. But to your point, you said that you you would Toronto you, Jets, Vancouver, and Edmonton. Anything. That's what I just said. Uh, yeah. It doesn't mean anything until you get paying attention. I know shit. By the way, can we do listen. something about the size of your no. head? No, stop. Like it's never not, I said like to my that. girlfriend last night. She's like, "How does a podcast go?" I go, "Not bad." Mm-hmm. Lachlan never listens to anything anybody Pete. says and just asks questions in the middle of the Pete, fucking tell him, answer all the time. Like you're doing now, he always changed the subject. Tell him no. about the size of his head. It's stop huge. It's, it's, it's the right frame, right? It's, yeah. it's all, it's so, all good. It's so, all good. but I'm really okay if the Leafs lose at the first round or don't get out of the second round. I'll be okay with it forever because that whole thing me too. makes me laugh even fucking harder <laughs> than I am a fan. Right. It's like I like Pete, you laugh. Pete's an influencer. Creek Pete, too. You can get him everywhere. That's why he's on the show. We want to get into some of the fun shit today. Some of the things he likes and doesn't like. We're going to talk about hot dogs, vodka and politics and media. But to 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 that point, if you're a real fan, right, you can totally see someone's bias when it comes to subjects like this. Who's the best? Who's the best defensive player? Who's the best player right now? Who's the best active player? And we were talking about ahead of time. And it's fucking amazing to me because people do that now with politics, right? People are like, that's my guy. And you're like, what about these things? And you're like, don't care that those things don't exist to me. You ignore every fact. You ignore anybody else's conversation because you're so emotionally attached to the idea that your guy is the best or is one of the best. Right, Pete? Isn't that us? Are we just like hockey fanning politics at this point? I, I think that's the overall scope of politics right now, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm not. See, and this this is the thing. Uh, I think there might be a misconception about me, um, like being this liberal Trudeau fanboy partisan guy. And you and, don't ask uh, Trudeau's D. You don't ask Trudeau's D. No. Like all of us. <laughs> no. It, the, the, I. I mean, I think. If I, if I go back my voting record, I probably voted conservative more than I voted liberal. Yeah, right? and you know what? That that that's funny. Uh, I you know what? Listen, I I want to touch quickly on the hockey thing that Dean brought up. Yeah. Okay. So I think there's always been the hockey fans that can have a discussion like we just had, where I know Dean when he gets on the podcast, he goes, "I'm going to mess with Lachlan. I'm going to talk about." <laughs> that awesome Matthew is. I'm no, he's really the best him. player in the history of the NHL both ways. So, and then we can have a little bit of fun with it, right? But then there's those hockey players where if their team loses, 
on a Saturday night can't have sex with their wife for four days. <laughs> that that's always been a thing. Right. They're so angry, dick. Their blood stops flowing to their yeah. penises, right? Like so. Um, I think we have we have always had that separation in sports. There's always been the sports donkeys. There's been those guys that like literally after their team loses. Remember that Buffalo Sabers fan we brought on? Yeah, that guy Dwayne, was a, Dwayne Steinel. He means it with his whole life. He was a wreck. Yeah, like he literally to has to take a every week relationship off work. Your, totally. Oh when you're willing God. to destroy every relationship in your life and put your employment in question because you rage about something that you can't yeah. control, like fucking sports or politics. Right. That guy Dude, has always been around. Favorite people, though. Those are my favorite people. And then when you watch a guy like Pete, I'm going to play something for you. You watch a guy like Pete talk about what he loves, and he loves talking about two things, if I'm not mistaken, Pete. Media and the absolute abatement of responsibility in politics and how stupid we are <laughs> yeah. buying any of this in. shit, yeah. right? Like, that's right. the thing that I love about Pete. And he takes this half-hearted approach. Like, we should be taking in these hockey conversations, and I'll bring one up right now because he's fucking brilliant at it. Uh, and Pete and I met, actually, and we'll get to the story in just a second, uh, a couple of months ago. But if you look at, take the eclipse, for example, yesterday, the politicization of the eclipse. I didn't now, there see are people. Like, oh, fuck, dude. It was everywhere, wasn't it, Pete? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't everywhere. even, how do, you, how do you describe it? How do you describe everybody taking a one in 400 year event and turning it into like political memes? Don't look up. Look at this. How do you describe yeah. that? I, I, it's just absolute stupidity. I mean, it really is. And then, and then the irony, I mean, if you play the video, I, the irony of what they were saying and just the lack of, here's the best part. The lack of common sense in yeah. all of it, right? Given that well, the conservative the, the <laughs> conservative uh, uh, campaign is all about common sense, and then just the complete lack of it in the in their memes and in their postings, I I just I can't help but laugh about it. I can't. Yeah. But is this is this a political? Like, did the Pierre Polyev yeah. campaign put this oh, out? There was like a okay. bunch of MPs that are tweeting this this yeah. meme. Okay. Dude, so Canada Proud put this together, the official meme agent, the guy's suing me, uh, for suggesting that they, ah, fuck, whatever. Canada <laughs> Proud put this out literally a day after the Republican Party put this out, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So it's like, right. it's not only is it unoriginal, uh, so they're, they're copying. like, how do we like, how do we attach ourselves in pure stupidity I see to, a, to a solar eclipse? And how do we get people to vote for our guy? <laughs> it's fucking crazy. I swear we are in the dumbest timeline. The dumbest. It's it, can we can we please escape this timeline of pure stupidity? Like I I fucking can't. I can't. So you must have seen this meme already because it's you know conservative MPs are passing it around and then their their troll bots from India are, are passing them around too. I mean <laughs> Okay, so let's just think about this logically here. Let's, let's conservatives think about this logically. It's a solar eclipse today. So what you're saying here is Pierre Polyev is going to bring darkness upon our country. That that's what you're saying here. Do you fucking not understand? I can't. And I know we're not supposed to compare Pierre Polyev's movement of stupid slogans to the MAGA movement exact they're exactly the same 100% they're exactly the same but then but then <laughs> they're passing around the same memes because this current conservative movement has three barely functioning brain cells that they all share like, <laughs> like, I actually think that's kind of it's kind of smart, no? no? No, do you not understand how an eclipse works, Pete? Can I you explain do, it to I Lachlan? do, I do explain, understand, explain but I like, the, I like, the I like the meme. There. I think it's funny. It's ridiculous. It's not funny. Explain it to him so he understands it, Pete. I well, no, I mean, I think, uh, he obviously gets it, right? But th just the principle of it, right? Like, first off, I mean, the eclipse only lasted a minute, anyways, too. So, so, so Pierre's so you're, going yeah. by. Oh, there's Pierre. Then he's gone, right? I mean, like, it's just, it's so stupid, right? <laughs> But the thing is, I mean, here's, and that, I'm not defending it, 
because it is dumb. But well, it doesn't make funny any, thing is, any common sense. Is like the eclipse is plunges everything into darkness. And so what they're right. doing is they're well, going, and, get and ready even, for the eclipse. Here comes the fucking darkness. Everybody. Even PT being guy. the moon, <laughs> right? Like a dead planet. But, I mean, I still find it entertaining from the perspective that they're trying to do something with something everybody is talking about. Right. Like, and that's, that's, that's where a stretch, dude. That's where we're them. at. Well, well, that's that, what that everybody is, that does dude, content. But, but yeah, you can't, I no, hang on. You everybody that does content is yeah, doing the I same know, thing. But, I know, but at like, some point, to Pete's point, at some point, we all have to look past a picture and go, uh, let's break this down. He's suggesting in, in their fucking meme excellence that Pierre Polyev is the fucking darkness and he's going to come and plunge the world into darkness. And to his point, if they're calling him the new eclipse, it's like, hey, is, other than just cool for a minute, like one minute, it's pretty fucking weird. Like, you know, you I mean, but, but you know, and my problem, I get what you're saying, Lachlan. I, 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 yeah, I yeah. get it, right? You, you watch. Everyone's you trying to be it, cute. Right. I get that. Also, what's dumbing down everything in this society, right? Oh, like, that, that's that's the better That's point. what the problem is. And, that, and yeah. that's what I find more funny than anything else. Like, yeah. I get the concept of the memes. I get it. But also, we have a huge section of our population that only get their information from fucking stupid memes like that, right? That's, and that's the more the terrifying thing. Whether right. the fact that they're using memes is just part of them trying to fit into the culture of, of, of what politics is now right. and i understand it from that perspective i think it's fun that you guys saw past it and broke it down and that you're you're developing content from it pete but that's that's the more terrifying thing i think right. of it our, oh, no, i agree 100 our society now is driven like they have they hire people to put memes out and it's part of their campaign pete that's fucking terrifying it is and it they take that that's terrifying. oh I, I but here's the thing i kind of love it and i'll tell you why because <laughs> the more i think about like, like four Not years crazy. of people who think that's a gotcha meme running this country i might be interested in that that's fucking clickbait central right. like sort of how when everybody says hey listen we should we should take all the trans athletes mix them into the olympics and have open categories for everybody. That overly inclusive category that doesn't really understand how this shit works, like the over inclusive stuff. I, I'm of the opinion you should really upset the fruit basket just for one Olympics, just to see what fucking happens. Right? Let's right. get them all. Talk together. about that. Let's get them all together in the same thing. Let's let the inmates run the asylum <laughs> once, just one time. And if we can do that and we want to see what happens, we'll never do that again. It's like these fucking crazy consequences to your right. point. So are you trying to warn people that this is going to be bad for Canada? Or are you like me where it's like, you know, it's kind of a toss up. It might be really fun for a few years. Well, so in, in regards to that, so like this whole ax the tax thing, right? Yeah. So my thing is Trudeau cut, cut the fucking tax right now. Empty. Just stop it right now. That's what he, should do, yeah. he should do that because What's going to happen is, is grocery prices aren't going to go down. Uh, gas prices will go down for a week. And then the gas price, the gas companies are just going to raise the price back up again. <laughs> and then, and then what's going to happen? Like all those fucking talking points, all those stupid slogans mean absolutely nothing. And that's, so I don't know, man. It's just, I agree with you, Dean. Do let's, let's, let's get all those grievances together. Yeah. Do it. Go, go, go nuts. And then see what happens, right? And then what, like I, what I find more interesting, though, is is I, I find it more like, like, why wouldn't he do that? It seems like I, because we have to, we have to meet our agreements, right? We I, have I get, yet, right? No, yeah. okay, I get that, but we I mean, a, there's we have ways they always find loopholes. Yeah, they always find loopholes around it. Totally. 
Totally. Well, right? yeah. you know, countries run by assholes, they do, but he's trying to stick to the nature of this Kyoto agreement and other worldwide agreements we've made, which have legally binding contracts that are associated right. with trade tariffs, et cetera, et cetera. So right. we actually have an obligation, as did the United States. Donald Trump pulled themselves out of that, but he's a rapist who got charged with 91 different <laughs> indictments and tried to commit treason against his own country. So right. like we can say you can take yourselves out of that. And to Lachlan's point and to your point, I don't disagree. He, they would have no talking points because it's a stupid fucking tax. And I don't even give a shit about the tax. I don't care about any tax. And that's the truth. Everybody gets so angry about the tax. And I'm like, fuck, I'm not going to yeah. see it. I'm going to get it back. I don't care. It doesn't change my life on a daily basis. But right. to, to your point, Pete, and to Lachlan's point, I see hundreds of protests erupting across the country over something that's going to net people money at some point. And I'm like, right. all taxes are bad. And I get it. But what are we wasting our time on? Which is why I find your fucking video so funny because you laugh your way through this and you've got people out there. I don't know if you saw the video from Alberta where the woman's screaming at a cop in the middle of the yeah. road, yeah. like about, about carbon taxes, like losing her fucking mind. And I'm like, I'm finding all of this funny now. Like I am not intimidated or threatened by any of it. Me neither. I, 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 I laugh at it too, because it is, it is really that it really is that stupid, right? Yeah. Like you're, you're, you're parking your car, running it on idle for fucking a week now. And well, what what is it that you're you're wasting more gas that you're spending it on? Right, like it just <laughs> makes no fucking sense. Well, uh, yeah, the 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 tax conversation I I, I find very frustrating because the, the two things. Me too. I don't me, even want to have it. Yeah, two things for me. I and it drives me insane. Um, because for some reason the left virtue signals with taxes when like it's a good thing. Like it's a, yeah, like they're yeah. defending it. And I'm like, how, like we're living in a time right now where man, people are having, it, it, it's more difficult now to pay your bills mm -hmm. and live and just function as a family than it has been ever. And, and, and again, I know when you're highlighting one and then they take it, but they give it back and then you might make more money. It drives me absolutely no, no, no. And, insane. And, and I agree with you. Like, like, I'm not a fan of the carbon tax. And in my video, I don't go to bat for the carbon tax. You in the point regard. out the hypocrisy. Of I just, yeah, it's just about the hypocrisy of it. It's just like you're, you're, need making, more of that. you're making, you're making this, this tax the the cause of all of our problems in the world when it's it's just that's not. The, that's the mistake they're making right because right. it's not that it's more than that and that's why i get frustrated when we have these conversations and we're dunking on people like those like the woman yelling at the cop right? oh no like, if you saw the video you'd have dunked it's on her stupid too. i did watch the video it's dumb <laughs> and it's hard not to pick fun like poke Meds. fun at that 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 type of thing but the yeah. the issue that i have Meds. with it overall is that we're we're that's that is taking our eye off the ball on the bigger picture right the same thing happened to covid you guys don't know what you're talking about you this that we're losing our brain is no we're not and we we lost we lost the 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 conversation got lost and we were unable to have the conversation that we needed to have which was we made some mistakes yeah. And the unintended consequence of the lockouts. And I mean, I know two people that drank themselves to death in, in COVID because they didn't cope well. Now, did Alberta? they have positions that everybody? No, one was in Vancouver, BC. Sad. Right. But to circle back on that, right. And then that's, that's exactly where I go with it too, because we circle back to the memes that spread stupid shit. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. where they're getting that idea from. Right. So it's all, it comes back to that where it goes, we're, we're 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 doing this campaign on dumb memes that spread disinformation. People believe it, right? And then they can't cope with the fact of you know somewhat reality that's not necessarily in that meme that they're believing, right? Yeah. So that's I, that's where the problem is. Like a when lot I, of people yesterday, a lot of the freedom people yesterday that were protesting, I heard this. They were really upset not to see Pierre Polyev's face uh, as the actual moon during the eclipse. <laughs> Yeah. They were like really upset. Then they started blaming Trudeau, calling him a tyrannical dictator. See, yeah, that, that the, the dunking stuff is I, like I'm 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 over it, right? Like for yeah, me, Pete, the thing with you that I like is you're calling out what I need, what I think needs to be called out is a lack of responsibility in the press, and that's I've had two or three conversations in the last couple of weeks that 
and and again, I'm not, I'm naive on some things, but I think I also, I think I also sort of cling to the idea that there's hope out there. And Dean pointed out to me that he he brought up a couple of people that get paid to propagate a message, lobbyists, and get brought yeah. onto panels in the media. And I was like, come That's on, crazy. Come on, you can't, like, please don't tell me that. And he goes, no, 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 I know for a fact this guy gets paid mm -hmm. around this amount of money. I could be off. I, I, it's great, fine shit, but I heard this guy gets paid this, this guy gets paid that. And I'm like, we should talk about that. And he's like, we should. So calling out the media right now, I think is more important and it's the bigger message. And I think if, if you don't like Pete's overall arching theme from his Listen closely to what he says, because when he's pointing stuff, yes, he's making a point about how stupid we are to believe in this thing. And if you're one of those people that believes it and got caught in the lie, you might be upset. But the overarching arching theme from Pete is, listen, there's some shit that's being fed down the pipeline that should be called out by our media. And it just isn't. And I think that's that's the next step. For anybody angry enough to write on a sign and head down to a border crossing or the ledge, you got to start saying what needs to be said. And the, the people that are passing on the information to us need to be held accountable as well. And that is not fucking happening right now. No, at, no, no. And, and, and our media essentially are, are stenographers, right? They, they don't have, they've lost that basic principle of fact checking. And that's my biggest problem, right? So like, I don't care if you do it to, to Trudeau, or if you do it to uh, Polyev, or if you do it to Jagmeet Singh. I don't care. Just if they make a statement, do don't just repeat it. Like if they're making a statement of fact, I don't know if you have the other video of, of one of Polyev. Which one? The one with PP in the in the face? That one? Like, uh, uh, you, or is it the other one with the the one that he's talking about? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I got it here. Closing prices in Vancouver. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'll right. play it here. Is right. it this one? This one. Hang on. Is it this? What is the yeah. number one cost to building a new home in Vancouver today? Land. Yeah. Labor. Lumber. No. Permits. Government represents sixty percent of the cost of a newly 60%. built home in Vancouver today. Sixty <laughs> percent. What? So. 40% is what? what you use to pay for the worker, for all the lumber, and the dry... That's clearly nonsense. Just clear, absolute bullshit. I, <laughs> Canadian media, here's your opportunity. It's an easy fact check. He's saying a percentage as a matter of fact. And it's your job to fact check that. I mean... <laughs> what the fuck? And I know we're not supposed to compare him to Trump and stuff, but they're literally, literally lying about crowd sizes now, too. <laughs> like, 2,000 people, except the venue can't even come close to that. Like, not what? What's going on? Again, media, I know that she's your darling, Miss X, Piers X, she's your darling. But, I mean, these are easily fact-checkable claims, right? This, this is your job. It's your job. There was another massive report of interference in our elections here in Canada, but I guess it's not that big of a deal because it's not getting 24-7 coverage like if it was, if it was something to do with Trudeau, right? But it's for the Conservatives, so they're just going to sweep that under the rug. That's interesting, right? But the biggest story right now is the carbon tax, right? Because April 1st, it's going up 3 cents. I'm sorry, sorry, 23%, which is equal to $7 billion or something. I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's the, the only focus right now because the premiers who are allowing energy companies to gouge us, they want to scapegoat the carbon tax, of course, because that 3 cents, that's that's what's causing the world's problems. Not Not corporate profits. No, not at all. Anyway, have a good one. Bye. I like that a little peak, a little Creek Pete. I always call you Pete Creek for some reason, a little Creek Pete. But to your point, and I think Lachlan, uh, it's a great question. You know, you, you you talk about the media that traditionally used to be able to cover that stuff. They go, this person said this today. Uh, here are the facts around it. You get none of that anymore. You none. just get the reporting of what he yeah. said. They you just don't report. get none of that's accurate. By the way, about 10 to 15 percent of any new build is permits. That's yeah. it. It's not 60 percent. No, right. it's between 10 to 15%. Now you work in a business, Pete. 
that requires permits, right? Like when you see yeah. when people are putting in houses, you know, doing backyards and stuff like that. So you understand that to be true. So it, yeah. it like, and that's the frustrating part. And listen to Lachlan's point, as much as I don't want to agree with him, uh, that ecosystem, the media ecosystem does all of that to remain accessible failure. to these people, right? They, they, that's it. Yes. Yeah. They're too, they're too close. Right. Yeah. That's the, that's exactly the problem, especially with, you know, the, the lobbyist uh, person within the campaign of, of the conservatives. I mean, they're all friends. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that's why they're not really calling out that bullshit because they're they're all in the same bubble. Yeah. And there's also something else that about works. that. Though. Let me well, there, there's something me else about the, that. Go ahead. I, I don't want to lose this point. No. There's so many conversations right now from content creators whether it's liberal, conservative, about the fatigue of what's happening right now on the and trust me, I was just in it. And it's happening, it happens between Dean and I. It happens between CTV's executives and who's delivering the news at five o'clock. It happens with people online that are just creating content. There is a Major conversation about how to handle this stuff because of what's happening in the States. Pete, you pointed it out multiple times about how the conservatives are using the playbook down in the States. And part of the playbook is we can say anything. It doesn't matter what we say. They're going to believe it. And if anybody calls us out, it's going to be even believed even more. Look at the Trump right. phenomenon. So everyone's right. terrified to make any comments one way or the other. Right. And politics is also buying into it as well on all sides. Mm -hmm. Like we pointed out the carbon tax increase on April 1st, Dean and I, and the fact that the provincial government took a provincial tax on gas and a relief of that tax and it pulled it on April 1st. Why right. do you think Danielle Smith did that? Because she knows that 35% of the population is just going to believe that the 30 cent increase in gas on April 1st kind of awesome. was Justin Trudeau's fault. <laughs> right. So we're we're caught in this cycle right now, and it's very poisonous to the point where yep. you're having a pro like it's not even about I believe in this or I'm a Justin Trudeau fan or I'm a conservative or anything like that. It's about pissing off somebody and somebody going after you online. And like not a day goes by that I don't get called out for being friends with Dean or working with Dean right. based on his position politically. And don't he's not a even a fucking liberal. And I'm like, okay. you don't understand Dean. You don't get it. You I, g listen to the podcast. Well, you're clearly a Nazi. Of us having the common sense and being able to have a conversation. We've lost sense, it. Right? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I mean, it's, it, I mean, I get called a paid liberal actor every single day. Uh, I get death threats almost on a daily basis. It, it, it's just, it's so stupid, right? Like, and the irony again, it comes, it comes from the fact, it comes from the, the crowd that says that they're all about free speech and freedom and blah, blah, blah. And then yet, as soon as anybody says anything against their kind of narrative, then it's like, oh, we, we, we fucking hate you and you should die. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I hope the death threats or something like, else. And, and that's on? the thing that makes me laugh. Like, we were supposed to take a really kind of fun approach to this. Lachlan's getting very serious about this topic today. It's very serious. <laughs> No, but, I'm um, getting. Your, listen, no, dude, who we can, cares? We, but people... we, I have conservative. Again, I'm not a liberal partisan. I've never donated to the liberals. I've never donated to any liberal uh, uh, political party. Period. I'm just yeah. a guy that looks at stuff and sees the connection. And and some people are just not are missing those connections, right? Well, and they I don't do, want to see them, right? They because when they get right. those connections in a meme, to Lachlan's point, to your point, they're like ammunition this is going to be sweet i can get some fucking friends today because i'm lonely right. and that works for everybody online right the extremes yeah. on the left the extremes on the right the overly yeah. inclusive people like someone the other day tweeted at me they're like you're a fucking asshole i'm like why is that mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're like because you didn't say anything about the national day of yeah. of of observance for the asexual people it was like national asexuality day and i'm like did I Fuck off. Do I it even is, know? Like, I, I don't even I don't, I don't know. Even know. I don't pay yeah, attention to that block, shit either. Block. But it's like you can get in trouble now. Not you can get death threats, literally, and you can get called out, which is why I don't take any of this shit seriously anymore, right? Yeah. Because you can get called out for what you don't tweet now. Right. 
you didn't stand up for asexual individuals yeah. today, Dean. Fuck you. And I'm like, yeah. oops, didn't know because it was uh, National guy, Orange Day. It was called, National got... Cucumber Day. It was National, you know, fucking <laughs> full scat paper day. It was National, hey, let's go to get an ice cream day. So, hey, whatever. Sure. Good for you. Congratulations. I got in trouble from some leftist friends for saying the word dumb. And apparently that's a bad word now. <laughs> right? I mean, just shut up. Really? Doesn't it come down to this, though? Like, literally, yeah, let me ask you guys this. Sad. Question. Let me ask you this question before we get to four more liters of vodka, hot dogs, and a couple other things. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Doesn't it come down to just the most scared people on both sides of the equation yeah. that are just scared because they don't quite understand what's going on they're just believing these things as opposed to connecting dots and it doesn't matter right. who you are our biggest problem is that and to your point pete and to lachlan's point the absolute co-signing of all of that dribble by newspaper outlets in the media in this country who don't really give a fuck about reporting yeah. anything accurately no. or calling things out. They care about now. maintaining access to Lachlan's point earlier, yeah. sports donkeys. It's why they don't say, hey, Connor McDavid got drunk in California last week. They, they don't want to lose their parking spot. At newspapers, no. they don't want to lose like access to Danielle Smith and this person and that person. and Maybe right. some government money they might be able to get. And so the frustration yeah. for guys like Pete, like we are in it, Lock. Like we know how absolutely ruthlessly corrupt and collusive media is with politics for a guy like pete i've been trying to ignore it for years I, you can't we can't for a guy like pete he's like what the fuck is happening like we've always yeah. known about it and right. we've just kind of accepted it in defeat right we're like yeah whatever but to pete's point and he's 100 percent right he's like i thought the whole idea behind free media was that you kept track of this shit right yes. instead of just opinions instead yeah. of just opinions right yeah. like I don't care, and I don't want to, again, say names, right? But there's like a whole bunch of fucking really old opinion guys that are still just like shitting out their opinions, and I don't care. I don't care about your opinion. I care about facts. So let's get back to, you could, you know what, in this kind of forum, with the three of us talking, we can talk about our opinions, right? Absolutely. That's what this is for. But if I'm looking to a news source media, I want fucking facts i don't want somebody's opinion that's it give me the facts of of what is your your subject that you're talking about yeah, yeah. and then we can make our own opinions right i don't want to pay somebody uh, uh, pay for a newspaper for for somebody's opinion about something that because they're biased right like i don't yeah. care about political bias they got in paid the news. to present that opinion right Right. Like that's the thing that drives me crazy. And and the thing is, as well, the other, the other problem I have with it, the other sticking point I have with it is that during COVID, this is the first time I'd ever seen this in my entire career. First off, I spent a long time in front of a mic for terrestrial radio and not once did anybody ever sit me down and tell me I had to present an opinion that was based on somebody that was paying my bill or somebody that a client that never happened. But as right. soon as COVID hit, I started getting all these messages from people on Facebook and on Twitter and on our text line, accusing me of representing uh, Pete. You'll love this both sides, depending on what came out of my mouth, literally to the, and this is, this is how bad it got to a, to a point where I started commenting back with, oh, yes, I'm sorry, I'm off script. I forgot to grab the facts from Justin this morning. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> so now, now I've, I've never been approached. No one's ever offered me money to propagate any kind of opinion whatsoever. Yeah. So I just assumed that it wasn't happening. I, I kind of knew at the back uh, of my mind that it was. Can I stop you for one second? Yes, yes, you can. And, yeah. and just to clarify with all the people that are going to be watching this. I am not paid to do this. I'm not. I don't get paid for my TikTok. That's the, every second comment that I get is, oh, you're a paid liberal actor. Blah, so you're blah, not blah, a paid blah. liberal shill, correct? No, I'm not a paid liberal shill. Okay, no. not done. But if you somebody have wants never to pay asked, me to make TikToks, I'll never, fucking do it. <laughs> you've never, me too. No. You've never asked Trudeau's D? No, no, never, never. I get that every day. Sorry to disappoint. 
I'm on TikTok. Trudeau, Does that make a me a Chinese spy? Are you, yeah, are exactly, you a Trudeau right? D licker? Yes or no? <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you a liberal operative? No. No. Okay. No. I am. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we knew it. We knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I want people to believe I am, though. No, I hate them all. No, no. See, what they'll do is they'll cut that little piece out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We knew it. We knew it all along. And it's on the fucking memes. And it's the CBC HQ is posted in, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a liberal operative. I get my little sunglasses out. I get my fucking little beat hat on. I put a little thing on, a little show. And I, sk- I skulk around, like, you know, places where the bad people are. And, uh, and I report them. I will say I this, though. News. If you're... If for you're Justin. taking money all from Justin. some p- political party to send a message on, I don't care what social media pl- or if you're doing it on panels on CBC, you're the worst human being ever. I'm Can sorry. Can I explain to you how that works? That, that just that, works. that makes me that drives me insane. That that's well, let me explain to everybody what you're talking about. Because it's what you're talking about isn't about people giving you money just to tweet something. What you're talking about is lobbying. Now, Canada has an interesting history with lobbying because we've been taking venal bribes for a good 150 years. That's what this country was predicated on. There is a healthy industry of lobbyists that pretend they are reporters, pretend right. they are consultants, that pretend they are strategists, yeah. right? Yeah. That's what they pretend. Corey Tenick, Jenny Byrne. I mean, there's thousands of them. Yeah. These lobbyists, while working for political parties like Jenny Byrne, who works for the Conservative Party of Canada and is Pierre Polyev's pegger, if you will, on the other side of that, well, whatever. I mean, it's uh, it's it's not literal; it's figurative, right? Of course. So, so you know, she's his master. She also works for a company called Loblaws. Are we familiar with that? Right. And she also goes on the news to talk about all of these things as if she doesn't have any interest in the political party. And if she doesn't have any interest in working for Loblaws, which pays her hundreds of thousands of dollars a year so that they can keep grocery prices high. So when they, when Jenny Byrne goes on CBC, she is a lobbyist and she's repeating messaging that she is telling Canadians is in their best interest. That comes from who pays her in this case, the conservative party of Canada pays her, to torque messaging to tell Canadians it's really good for you to have religious fucking theocrats at the head of the table. And then she also has people saying, when you go on CBC, we're going to pay you thousands of dollars to go on CBC. Pretend that you're part of our team and you pretend that you're Canadian, but you're really getting paid by Lala's to tell them it's really good for you to pay five times more for chicken this year than you did two years ago. Tell them it's really good. And so they couch. And then blame the carbon tax for that. And then blame Justin Trudeau for the things well, that they're we doing. We all know it's Justin's fault. Of course <laughs> right. it is. I'm also a conservative operative. I didn't know if I told you that. I'm a conservative <laughs> operative and I'm a liberal operative. Just, just switch I'm your hats. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I got red on one side, blue on the other. It's what yeah. I do. Um, and so when you see people in the news, like CBC's Power and Politics, and they're talking about things, they are paid to lie to you. Oh my God, that drives me crazy. On behalf of these political parties, but they're not only paid by the political parties to lie to you about the reality and the facts with which they are dealing with in public. They're also paid by corporations at the same time. So they're double dipping. Like someone like Jenny Byrne, she's sometimes quadruple dipping on the same piece of information to be able to go out there and tell you that your reality is better and we don't know that for a fact. Like, Say oh, that, that out loud for because that is a fact. That is a fact. <laughs> probably I know who these people are. I know probably a good paid. point to just suggest that maybe some of this information might not be true. Don't allegedly. Don't, I have. Uh, don't sue me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, in the case of being sued, Canada Proud also considered a lobby group, and let me explain that to you. Yeah. They parade around like they're legitimately a media organization. Right. They only work in Canada with the Conservative Party of Canada and their affiliates to create memes 
like the one that we just saw. That was their meme, the one about the eclipse. And then they attach fundraisers and donations on the bottom of it. Help, you know, Canada needs to go in a better direction. You got to give us a bunch of money. The latest fundraising I've had, fundraising effort I've had from the Conservative Party of Canada in my email, this is fucking hilarious, was about the eclipse. Don't wait. <laughs> And it had three places to donate in an email that was no more than a paragraph and a half long. Oh my God. And I'm like, fucking, this is unbelievable. Well, they all do it. All, every party, I'm sure, does that too, right? Like, oh, yeah. The, the NDP totally. does the same. What he's not, totally. so does, so does liberals, right? what, what, he's not, what he's not telling you, though, is that he keeps removing himself from that list and they keep re adding <laughs> They ignore it. <laughs> Fuck you. You're not leaving, man. <laughs> Somebody, somebody's trolling Dean. Totally. totally so every yeah, time he sits on yeah, subscribe yeah. on that email, someone puts him back on the mail. But to your point, to your point about the, the, the panelists, uh, right? Like yeah. there was there was that when that when that whole, you know, the dude that was in parliament with you know the the the, the Nazi past or whatever it was, right? I remember watching a, a CBC uh panel or i saw clips of it anyway and you know and one of the conservative the, the conservative guy was like oh you know we we i know that trudeau didn't invite this guy because he was a nazi or whatever but you know the conservatives are playing politics and, and we're just gonna blame it on him anyway we're gonna say that you know he invited the nazi and that was that was the thing and you know playing politics is a really politically correct way of saying why Right. And that's that's the one thing that drives me fucking crazy. It's like, yeah. you know, you're lying. You're admitting that you're lying. You're just framing it in a, a really nice way. In a and for some way. reason, for some reason, yeah, we can we can talk it away by just saying, oh, but that that that's politics. Yeah, that's plain politics. Oh, like, oh it's just a straight up lie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't like to fact check, do we? To your point, like it's not like we have a bunch of people not in Canada right now bias. going. You know what? Um, I saw a tweet today that concerned me, and I'm going to do a little research on that tweet when I get home, so that I'm not influenced either way. We're like this fire hose. Let me drink from yeah. a fire hose of that shit. Let me get a kind of, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. like that's exactly what we are now. I I do think though we we um we have created a I don't know the best Monster. way of putting this. I think we we're too influenced by the Americans. That's that's our. Problem. We are, but oh, we've yeah. also created this this type of personality that gets up every day and is and this happens on the right end and it happens on the left you probably got a guy at work like this that every day he comes in all he wants to talk about is trump right, right. like and everybody in the office just nods and and agrees and hopes that they don't run into him at the coffee machine right or her <laughs> right there's, I don't know if that guy existed 10 years ago, but he exists and she exists now. And that person is so far gone and so in their bubble and they're in their spiral. I, I, Back to the hockey that, thing though, too, right? Like it's that, that, that like we're not paying attention going. to any facts. You're not yeah. paying attention. And you're just like, Hey, I am just in love with this team. Yeah. He's my guy. Like and, and disregard anything that, yeah. that deviates from that, right? Yeah, yeah, like anything yeah. that but deviates not from having that. the perspective to realize that it's just a game, right? Like well, that's, the, that's the separation I think that that we're having right now. Because I I've been I've had moments where I've had like people, coworkers, friends, my wife, say to me, "Lock, you got you you, you got to turn the the news off. You got to stop. We I can't have this conversation with you anymore." Right. Um, and I, I see that in other people in my life as well, right? Where they are, they're spiraling. It's they're obsessed with it. And that's why I say to Dean all the time, Dean, Twitter, it's not the real world. It just isn't. Right. And yeah. I'm guessing Pete, no, your wife has probably said that to you too, a couple of times. Of course. Yeah. 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 And she's yeah. also said, wait, 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 well, it's my problem is that because I, I start getting trolled. Right. And then yeah. my problem is, is that I know that they're, I know that they're fucking bots. I know it, but they say something so stupid. And I'm like, you, you, you have I, to respond. I, to <laughs> right? Oh God. I love you, Pete. Dude, right? how's your block I just have to, it's like, you know? My wife's looking at me. She's like, she knows my face. Right. Cause I'll get like this fucking, like fucking dick. Like, you know, right. <laughs> right? And she knows my face. She's like, can you just stop for a minute? Like, yeah. give me a break. Right. And I'm like, yeah, she knows okay. You. okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's your block game, Pete? Yeah, what is it like? Oh, I block like a motherfucker, man. Like, <laughs> have you got a number? Have you got, what's your number? I, I'd have to look, but on on TikTok, I I mean, because I keep my I try to keep my follower list like with real people as well too, 
right? Like yeah, I yeah. don't let the bots follow me. Like, because they, what do they also do is they, uh, like the bot swarm follow you and then they mass report you and then you get booted off the platform for no reason, right? So I try to keep it with people that are real and that actually engage in good faith. So if I see a bunch of, like, I'll look, go, I'll go look at who they're following or who their followers are. And if they have a whole bunch of porn bot followers, like they get removed right away. So, and then, and then also if you come into my comment section and then just regurgitate stupid things on every done. video, done, like you're gone. Yeah. Dean's up yeah, over 13,000 or something. I, I was just looking. I'm, I got it right now. Uh, I got some rules too, and they've saved my life uh, over the past year. I'm at 12,142 accounts no, that I've blocked just on nice. Twitter. It's the only thing I use, to be honest with you, because other people, man, he, is the other shit. He's a little so loose on his blocking, though. I know. That's how Pete and I met. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I get I get, a, I get a, like a DM from somebody, and they're like, hey, uh, this guy just put up a video and wants to know why you blocked him. And I'm like, probably for very good reasons. And so I went and watched the video, oh, and I'm nice. like, oh, I like Pete. I shouldn't have blocked Pete. I didn't know that I blocked Pete, but like I'm on such a fucking block heater that sometimes I'll be like, Dang. it was cut. You wait, I commented on a video of you reposted a video of mine. You were trying to be funny. I commented like, thanks, bro. And he blocked me on it. Yeah, yeah, that does not surprise me. None of this surprises me. I None did it to Steve Boots at too. all surprising. I did it to Steve Boots. I get a note from someone who's like, hey, watch this video. It's Steve Boots, who's great. He's like another really, he's a smart yeah. guy. He's a teacher out in Saskatchewan. He's got a massive YouTube channel. He's really accountable, very funny, super yeah. dry and sarcastic. He's really good. And someone sends me this video and I watch it. It's like, hi, I'm Steve. I have no idea why Dean Blundell blocked me. <laughs> he did. Um, and if anybody can reach out to him and let him know, Pete, that, like, and I'm, I'm retweeting his videos too. That's the other thing. I'm retweeting Pete's videos. I'm retweeting this guy's videos, but I have blocked them somewhere along the way where it's like, I don't know if I've done it. So sometimes people get caught up in the vortex of block. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Pete. We're great friends now. My apologies. Okay. Oh, you're forgiven, buddy. That Thanks doesn't mean man. he's not going to block you. He blocks me once a week. Blocking me after this episode. We're done. See you, buddy. <laughs> no, I won't do it, that. I, I, get, I get somebody contacting me, I'd say, once a week. with I don't know why Dean blocked me. And I'm like, Jesus. I, like, I used to send Dean, like, these long emails, like, like long <laughs> notes. And I just stopped. I'm just like, yeah. listen, he's, he's a dick. You're just going to have to... Live with no, it. Just, I don't no, know what just, to say. He, he doesn't care. And that's the thing is that Twitter is not the public square. It is. It's a private company that's owned by a dude. That account is not mine, but I can control it. And it, I don't like it when people walk into the front door of my house and take a dump on the fucking area rug. <laughs> right. So, yeah, but Pete didn't take a it? dump on the area rug. He just made a comment and you blocked oh, him. Uh, See, so dude, you I'm have a little hair you need to trigger, revisit your blocking. You 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 need to revisit some of your blocking strategies, or, or, or give them a like a three strike rule. You're right? you're let's hurting go, people. Let's, let's get back to the sports and Those, give them the three strikes. And then, strikes. And then do it. Yeah, but I can't keep track of all the times people uh, call me a cuck or uh, a Trudeau <laughs> BSer. Like I can't. Like, how am I going to do that? Oh, that's okay. one strike for Johnny nine six nine nine. Oh yeah, nine, user number seven hundred forty three four four one. Right. I kind of have a Pete. I kind of have a Pete rule, but the three strike thing works for me. Like I, I'll give somebody a chance because sometimes keep track I miss, with forty four thousand followers. No, no, yeah. I, I don't keep track. But I mean, if it's a if it's a thread that's happening, right? Where I like if yeah. somebody calls me a tool or whatever, I'm like, hey, thanks, you have a great day. And then if they double down, I'm like, all right, we're blocking you. Uh, right. But if I, because I've had this happen to me multiple times where somebody will make a comment and I will miss, like, I'll, I'll, like, they're trying to be funny or sarcastic. You don't pick up on I, it. And I'll lose that oh. and because you lose, like, I'll lose the subtlety of it. So then I, like, I'll fire back with an asshole comment. And then they're like, <laughs> oh, hold on. I was trying to be funny. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> I've done it too. The breaks, the breaks. Now I've had, yeah. the, the best way to do it now, if you're going to block people, and we'll let Pete go because he's got to go to his day job after this. Looks like you got some jank I like Pete. fermenting in the background too behind you, like some butt hash in that jar behind you. Is that no. just a vase? It's just, it's just a fancy vase. Oh, okay, it. sorry. The wife picked like, it out. Okay, sorry. Um, so the one thing I will say this is that I think it's probably the best idea 
when someone says something to you and you're not too sure how to take it is to go through their feed for like four tweets. Right. You need three, four tweets. You look at their bio. You look at three, four tweets. You don't do any of this. The first four <laughs> tweets are like just. I do. I, 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 I legitimately do. do. I, I really do. I, I do take sometimes. Look. Sometimes I do. But this <laughs> saves me when I'm not too sure about the person, right? Like, is that a sarcastic comment? Is it not a sarcastic comment? Yeah. I know. I know you S Trudeau's D is not someone I want in my timeline. So what yeah, I do is I point. look at the first four tweets. And if I see a picture of like, you know, uh, a trans book reading on fire, yeah. that's, yeah. that's when I'm like, yeah. oh, what about, uh, okay. And it's like yeah. all of it. You can see it in the first four tweets, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But what, says, what about, the leaks, what I'm about, like, right. um, Justin Trudeau may be, um, Castrol's son. Cause that oh, one God. I love, God. I've, I've retweeted that a couple of God. times, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> So, I got to be honest, so have I. Come on, I still find on, that funny. They look so on. much alike, Pete. <laughs> no, but I've retweeted it. They have to be under the auspice is not that it's true, but that it's just still funny. Like it doesn't matter. I, I literally had it in my comments. I don't even yesterday. care. Uh, did you I had really? it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, look, I have Trudeau's to. Castro, he's going back to Cuba. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> we can all appreciate that. We don't have a problem with it. Yeah. We really but don't. No, but, but, but again, this is what comes up, right? It comes to that, to go, again, because he's also a pedophile, right? Yeah. And probably. that's the shit where I get, I, get, I get pissed off because we just like, you have to be an idiot to still believe that, right? Like you, you have to be legitimately a dumb person. And if you're either, you're either a dumb person or you're a liar. Right, so that's the, and I it's intentional. Either way, yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll get my dumb hat on because I still think that he is Castro's son. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, Lachlan is. And then when we run he, him out of Canada, he is going to go to Cuba, Pete. He is. You, He's going to Cuba, man. He's do you want to mention to people why you've put up this uh, shirt on our screen and ignore well, talking about it for the last couple minutes? Um, this is the, screen. I was blocked by Dean Blundell t-shirt available <laughs> on the Dean Blundell store. <laughs> it's only 28 bucks Canadian. Sweet. If you need the link to send it to me and I'll fire it at you. I did get a <laughs> chuckle when we put this shirt up. I had my t-shirt guy put this shirt up, Pete. Yeah. And, uh, and then Dean quickly went on Twitter and promoted it. And I'm like, <laughs> nice. you're promoting something that. The blocked people on your list yeah. would buy, and right. they're all blocked. Well, I also said in that when the promotion of the tweet, I'm like, I'm going to have to unblock good. a good eleven or twelve thousand people to sell one in shirt. Order to sell, yeah, <laughs> right. That's we what haven't I sold asked. any yet, Pete. That's we haven't sold asked, any. Yeah. yeah, surprisingly, that's when I asked um, a friend of mine. I'm like, so. How do you sell t-shirts to people that you blocked on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, bad business idea. Hey, uh, I'm sure Elon is looking right. for ad campaigns, right? So yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Creek Pete, where can people find you, sir? Where can we find you? And by the way, I want everybody to take a page out of Pete's book. He's not mad at culture. He's mad at the lack of responsibility that we've taken into our information lives. Right. And the professionals that were paid to usher us through it have seemed to have taken a pass when it comes to yeah. being responsible journalists, right? So uh, where can people find you, Pete? Uh, so on Twitter, it's uh, Creek Pete too. And on TikTok, it's Creek Pete. Creek Pete. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Pete from Hamilton. We'll let you go, brother. Will you come back again? Anytime. All right, Anytime. buddy. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. That was there awesome, Pete. Nice meeting you. Yeah, nice guy. I like that guy. You know why I like him? He knows it's a joke and treats it like a joke. It's all a joke. It Not is, and, that, and you know what? Serious. We need we need more of that. We need more of that. We definitely do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, Speaking of jokes, great, that was a great conversation. Speaking of uh, jokes, as I uh, previously mentioned, um, you told a few when you were on the radio, didn't you? I did. This ties into the conversation we were having yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the locker room retro replay mm -hmm. is brought to you by Arden Roof Systems. The golf tournament is happening on Friday, July fifth at the Ranch Golf and Country Club. Um, if you go to any of my social media, there's a link to sign up. But a heads up, we're in April right now, and that's the early bird pricing to register a team 
or um, or a foursome or two or whatever. You, you, you just go to the just go to the webpage and get any information you want there. But do it before the end of April, just based on the early bird pricing. So yesterday, I remember we had the conversation about is there a is there a um, what you call it an Alberta accent? And I admitted that there was, and we kind of got into a bit of a disagreement about what it is. So this is a break that highlights the Alberta accents. All right. And you were kind of right in your vowels comment. Well, before Listen you play it. it, before you play it, if I was kind of right in my vowels comment, are you going to apologize for yelling at me like you're my dad? No, yesterday? no, 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 no. I told you that you're, you, you were doing the you get her done thing. And I was like, that's not, that's not it. That's how you were highlighting it. So I'm not apologizing. All right. The Alberta accent in today's locker room retro replay of the day brought to you by Ardent Roofing System. The Lock, the lock, lock retro, 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 retro replay. Play. We had this conversation about the Alberta accent. I had numerous people reaching out to me last night. I don't know what to tell you. If you grew up here and you've lived here for 60 years and you haven't heard an Alberta accent. You need to leave for a while and then come back. That's on you. Yeah. <laughs> Because 90% of the people that move to Alberta hear it right away. Can like, I even say the Canadian accent's the same way? We don't hear it a lot of times until yeah. you leave and come back. I, remember I was there in London a for a year, and I came back, and I was like, wow, we do talk slow. Yeah, we have, <laughs> we, 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 have, a, have, a we have an accent. Like, we have an yeah, accent. And the Alberta accent is very real. And yesterday, the conversation I've been having with a friend of mine, the guy that I do the podcast in the afternoon, Steve Blundell, he's like, you guys have a Berta accent. And like, Get her done. And I'm like, that is not, that's not it. It's, it's subtle. Grant said, you hear it occasionally. And I can tell right away, you were born raised here and you probably never left mm -hmm. we put up a video out yesterday of us talking about this and within minutes i had a text from a friend of mine who was born here and has a berta accent yeah. and he goes i don't know why you didn't think of me he was actually upset no. i had him send me audio mm -hmm. it's Sorry. subtle it's not get her done yeah it's <laughs> subtle but there is a alberta accent so this is a typical Saturday for me, oh, this is it. It. I'm out there working on the truck, right? Something's grinding, something's making some kind of crazy noises. Probably the tranny's chewed or whatever. The old lady peeks her head out the door, starts yelling across Holy the neighborhood. Ooh. There, there it is. We've got some kind of dinner plans. We got to go get in the house, get cleaned up, yep. right? Because I'm all, it's okay, fine. Give me 10 minutes here. I'm going to choke down a dart and then we'll <laughs> there it the is. car. We'll go for a rip. We'll go get some dinner, right? Get fed. And then she's on me about her friends, you know, Stacy, this and that. I don't give a whatever we go to dinner everything's fantastic and i tell her look i'm i'm dead tired man i'm just i'm done for the day <laughs> gonna go home pound it's a there. few beers pass out gotta be up crack of dawn the oil field don't Come rest on. for nobody my foreman's a <laughs> dick <laughs> right it is what it is so we're gonna do that <sighs> saturday man of course you work sunday it's alberta baby is the way it? he says don't it's is in that the, an it's in accent the vowels. or a verbiage? Because like he no, uses it's an accent. I'm gonna get rid. It's, it's a dialect. It's Jesus, Jimmy, dude, you crushed it. Okay, so it's in the vowels. Yeah, and and Mel grew up here, lived here yeah. his whole life, right in the balls of of Edmonton. So he knew exactly what he was talking about. I had yeah, yeah, yeah. 30 people reach out to me yesterday after we ran the podcast about the Alberta accent. Mm -hmm. Um, and one guy from again, remember I told you. When we, when we had people from Ontario or other parts of Canada move here to Alberta in, in the booms, in the boom times, mm -hmm. they would pick it up right away. And uh, one guy suggested, what was his name? Russ. Russ said a good test word is, um, what, what's behind me with, that's covered that the dog lies on? Say it. Couch. Okay. He said couch is a good way to test whether or not people have a, and I don't have an Alberta accent. Couch. No, you say couch like I say couch. It's yeah. couch. It's couch, couch. Out, out there. Couch. Oh, I got to sit on the couch. couch. Like, like couch. I know I overdo it and I um, it's, exaggerate it's, it, but you're right. Subtle. It's this OU sort of draw, right? It's yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what they I'm hang saying on it. Yeah, and I was they, trying they to talk like this. Oh, hang on. I'm going to fucking take the old. Dude, Mel Schmiller crushed it. Like, he, you, you know what? Now that I'm 
actually, I'm angry. Why? Because you're always I absolutely. Because <laughs> I fucking crushed it. I'm listening to Mel do the whole fucking get out there for the lady, right? The old lady, she wants us to get the fucking. And I'm like, I did that all yesterday. And you're like, that's not it. And you chastise no, yeah. me. You're like, you're hard on people. And then all of a sudden, I listen to no, Mel. You're... And he's literally doing an impression of my impression yesterday, only oh. months ago. No, that's that's the way Mel talks. Yeah. So that wasn't an impression, and it wasn't Geeter done. You're know it wasn't. you're way past. Do I, I was add trying some to things? pull you back? Yeah, yes. I know. It's dude, yes. I overdid anyway. it so people knew what I was talking about. But to your point, we're more Americanized with our vowels out here. You're more Canadianized with your vowels out there. That's a nicer way to put it. Right? Yeah. But I was right. I like that was Pete. The accent. I do too. Do you think it has something to by the way? Just real quick, and we talked a little bit about how fucking hard Alberta parties with these four liter vodka bottles. Yeah, that was for sale in a local thing. We had a little laugh about that yesterday. Take nothing. Dude, away those from things the are people everywhere. I know they are. Well, I, they're, I they're, went to, I had to drive through the city yesterday because yeah. I I have a friend that runs the service department at, at Kentwood Ford. So she she um she's like, God, bring your car if you ever need the tires flipped or whatever. So I had to go up north end of the city. Uh, on 97th and yeah. i saw that sign on two liquor stores they're not only are we selling it they're promoting that on signs outside the store to get people to come in oh it's a good loss leader um 44.95 yeah. by the way for four liters of vodka and a plastic milk jug is a great deal uh <laughs> it's not the only deal in a four liter you got the t-rex vodka party, party jug Party jugs. Um, and Alberta, this this happened just like yesterday. Uh, not only did did we make these jugs viral yesterday, apparently now the, the province of Alberta, the Alcohol, Liquor, and Gaming Commission is like, no, uh, uh, you can't do that. Alberta Distillery to stop making four liter the vodka. Fun jugs killers. Minister raises concerns. But to the point, do you see how much? <laughs> you're right. Total fucking wet blankets. Sixty six ninety nine for this four liter jug of T Rex, right? You know, in a milk jug. If you That's go to awesome. the other store, it's forty nine ninety five. That is a way better deal to get a milk jug. I just want to point that out. But they're about to be discontinued. So four liters of vodka. Ace. Well, and the funny thing is, now that we're promoting it, there's going to be a rush to the stores. <laughs> I know. I know. What was the sorry. hot dog thing that you? Because you were teasing a hot dog thing too. Yeah. Let's get to it tomorrow. I don't want to okay. get to it today. This is like an hour and seven minutes. I okay. have a question about hot dogs because I went to Costco the other day. Yeah. That's all I want to talk about. I want to talk about hot dogs when we first started the podcast tomorrow. I have very serious concerns. Hot dogs. Anti-competition rules. We're in that place. We're in that place okay. where hot dogs at Costco. Bait. Delicious, affordable bait. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. That's it for me. You done? You good? I'm done. Yeah. Get I'm your good. get your um, golf pass for the Arden Roof Systems Charity Golf Tournament. Stollery Child Life Program. Again, send me a note. I'll fire you the link. Early bird pricing wraps up at the end of April. Um, You don't want to miss the best tournament in the summer, of the summer. All right. Yeah. And uh, tax deductible, too, by the way. And here's the other thing. Uh, you're going to have a great time, and you're going to enjoy some people, and you're going to be helping some kids live their best lives as they go through and some Dean's stuff. And coming right? out. And I will be there on July 5th for this event. So let's all have a good time. Let's make some money for the kids. Go and sign up. Go to ardentroofsystems.com. Sign up to be a partner. Sign up to donate. Sign up to golf. Sign up to sponsor. Do your best for these beautiful children who are going through it at Stollery Children's Hospital. So thank let's you, do Dean. that together. Anytime, buddy. Good to see you. Lachlan Cross at Lachlan Cross on Twitter is where you can find him. You can find everything he does at Cryer Media. Go to Cryer.co for more details. Brought to you by our friends at Rome Auto. Go to Rome.auto for more details on how you can get a new car and not have to buy one. Yeah, that's right, because it's a car subscription company. Drive on your own terms. Car subscription from Rome. Uh, insurance, routine maintenance, roadside assistance, including everything uh, except fuel. Uh, I, yeah, I said that. You don't pay for insurance. You don't pay for maintenance. You don't pay for roadside assistance. It is included in your 
low monthly payment that covers absolutely everything. You can walk into a car, walk out of a car, flexible monthly plans, one month, two months, three months. It doesn't matter. They don't care. Only thing they care about is getting you in a car that you like. Go and browse cars today. 4.9 stars out of Google. You can also check them out on BlogTO, CBC, Yahoo Finance. This is a really cool little deal, and it's in the GTA for the first time. So if you're in Toronto and you're looking for a car and the barrier to entry is just too much, and if you're really worried about getting hosed on a used vehicle, and if you're really sick and tired of overpaying for used EVs, go and get one basically for the price of what you would pay for any car, any lease with no lease commitment, no purchase commitment, no upfront payment. And all of your uh, incidentals are included insurance, routine maintenance, roadside assistance. Uh, and right now you can roam with Dean. That promo code gets you $150 off your first month. That matters depending on the car that you drive. It absolutely matters no matter what. You want to save $150. Uh, you want a new car. You're in the mix for one. Maybe you're between cars and you want to try an EV. It doesn't matter. These guys are great. Go to Rome.auto. Rome with Dean is your prom promo code. Rome.auto. Rome with Dean, your promo code. Go to Rome Auto today. Get yourself a new vehicle. Don't buy. Subscribe. Also brought to you by our friends at factcheck.io. Factcheck is robust software that helps you figure out what you need to do to be able to believe. That's right. We are inundated. We just talked about it. Lies, memes, everybody's been lied to by politicians, captains of industry, big pharma. That's what happens. You want to find out the truth? You want a, a little hand buddy? You need someone to be able to usher you through the highway of disinformation. That's what the software does. Factjack.io is looking for beta testers, too. Tried this again the other day. We've been through like six or seven different user experiences with the beta test with Factcheck, and every time it blows me away. They had new sources, new connections, new epistemology. Every single, single time I go in there, there's something new that helps me understand that disinformation and misinformation is one of the world's biggest businesses, and you need that agency over your life when it comes to what you read, see, feel, hear, and touch. That's what Fact Check does. Go to factcheck.io for more details and to sign up for their beta test today and become a verified fact checker, factcheck.io. Do you believe? We're also brought to you by our friends at Cantorque. Cantorque makes rugged, hardworking torque wrenches. Cantorque.com is the name of their website. Go there today. Check out all their products, all their services. If you're looking for any kind of bolting solution, anything, doesn't matter, heavy industry, forestry, railroad, nuclear, uh, the the uh, steel industry. I mean, uh, Colin and his group, they're in Canada. They manufacture in Canada, design in Canada, and they fabricate any torque wrench for any bolting need around the world in Edmonton, Alberta, proudly for heavy industry around the world. They've been doing it for 20 years. They're a complete solution shop, and that is what they do for people that need torque wrenches. Any bolting solution, loosening or fastening, it doesn't matter what it is. They make the best in the world, and they're known for it. That's why they are worldwide centered here in Canada, proudly Canadian, Maple Leaf on every single one of their products. Go and check out all their products today at cantorque.com. Also, last but not least, brought to you by our friends at Muse Massage Spa. Right now, you can join the ladies at Muse for a sesh. It's called the Dean Sesh. That's right. That's right. Hey, listen, it's therapeutic. I love these girls. They're entrepreneurs. It's safe. They're sexologists. They're educators. Sex work is work. So, MuseMassageSpa.com. Check out their calendar. They've got a brand new website as well, so you can check out some of the muses and treatments and location. Uh, you can also download their podcast. They educate people. They help women and uh, men in this industry uh, find their footing, and also they're educators as to what the sex work industry is all about. Their podcast is phenomenal, uncensored on Patreon, Muse on the Mic. Make sure you go and sub today. Also, their YouTube channel is called Muse on the Mic, and you can get everything they do at Cryer Media. Go to crier.co for more details. Go and sub to their podcast and check them out there too. But more importantly, uh, make sure you give them a visit. Use massagespa.com, 1290 Finch Avenue West, Unit 13, Toronto, Ontario. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for being here. We'll see you tomorrow on this very program. Who do we have tomorrow? Oh, Steve Cody, former record guy. Hockey helps for the homeless. I've known this guy for 25 years. Maybe the best storyteller in the world. He's toured with every major band. He's one of Canada's greatest music executives. Now he's into his, he's into this uh, the, the the altruistic portion of his retirement. Uh, you'll love him.
He's going to be here with us tomorrow. We'll tell some old stories. We'll relive some moments from the edge and Lachlan's time in radio, my time in radio, and then we'll get to the uh, important the important part of the day, helping homeless people uh, and helping house people through sports. Uh, so we'll talk about that tomorrow. Steve Cody, don't forget, we've got Dave Moscrop still coming on Thursday. Uh, trying to close the gap with Charlie Angus. He'll be the first politician we've had on the show in like three years because we banned them all. Yeah, he's leaving, so he's not really a politician. And uh, on Friday, Frankie. Graves, Ecos, Research. He's going to drop some new research about what the political landscape looks like, who believes what, and all that information. So we'll have that for you all week long. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, subscribe anywhere you get this fine podcast, Google, Apple, Spotify, etc. Also, YouTube, Cryer Media, Dean Blundell Show on Cryer Media as well. Thank you very much for taking a minute with us. We always appreciate your time because you can't get more time. You can always get more stuff. So when you give us your time instead of stuff, we're more appreciative of that. Thank you. Have a great day. See you more. Bye.